I'm asking this graduating class, those of you here, I've asked all of my viewers in America and across the world to do this one thing. Keep a grateful journal. Every night, list five things that happened this day in days to come that you are grateful for. What it will begin to do is to change your perspective of your day and your life. I believe that if you can learn to focus on what you have, you will always see that the universe is abundant and you will have more. If you concentrate and focus in your life on what you don't have, you will never have enough. Be grateful. Keep a journal. You all are all over my journal tonight. I always understood that there really was no difference between me and the audience. At times, I might have had better shoes, but at the core, the core of, of, of what really matters, that we are the same. And you know how I know that? Because all of us are seeking the same thing. You're here at this fabulous school, and we'll go out into the world and each pursue based upon what you believe your talents are, what your skills are, maybe your gifts are, but you're seeking the same thing. Everybody wants to fulfill the highest, truest expression of yourself as a human being. That's what you're looking for. The highest, truest expression of yourself as a human being. And because I understand that, I understand that if you're working in a bakery and that's where you want to be, and that may be, the, that may be what you've always wanted to do is to bake mm -hmm. pies for people or bake cakes for people or to offer your gift, then then that's that's for you. And there's no difference between you and me, except that's how that's your platform. Mm -hmm. That's your show every day. So my understanding of that has allowed me to reach you know, everyone. To, to, to reach everyone. And and there's no way that you wouldn't because that's that's what I truly feel. Close your eyes for a moment, will you please? And breathe with me. Just close your eyes. And if you will, put your thumb to your middle finger and gather your other fingers around and let's feel the vibration and pulse of your personal energy as you take three deep breaths with me. Inhale. And as you exhale, just feel the vibration, energy, blood, pulsating through your body, through you. And another inhale. And another inhale. And keep your eyes closed. And let's just think about this day. This day that you have been graced to breathe in and out thousands of times. This day where many of those breaths were taken for granted. You just expected the next one to come. But the truth is there's no guarantee that the next one comes. This day, how you started your day, what your thoughts were this morning, how you've carried yourself through this day, how you've been allowed to have encounters and experiences, some challenging, some more life enhancing, that pushed you forward another day of being here on the planet Earth as a human being. Let's just think about that. After all you've been through in this day alone and the many days and years past how you got here to this 
prestigious, esteemed university, the choices you made that have brought you to this day. Open your heart and quietly to yourself. Say the only prayer that's ever needed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're still here. And you get another chance this day to do better and be better. Another chance to become more of who you were created and what you were created to fulfill. Thank you. I say to the, my girls all of the time that your real work is to figure out where your power base is and to work on the alignment of your personality, your gifts that you have to give with the real reason why you're here. That's, that's the number one thing you have to do is to work on yourself and to fill yourself up and keep your cup full, keep yourself full. Now, I used to be afraid of that. I used to be afraid, particularly from people who say, oh, she's, she's so full of herself. Mm, she's so full of herself. And now I embrace it. I, I, I consider it a compliment that I am full of myself. Because yeah. you only when you're full, I'm full, I'm overflowing. My cup runneth over. I have so much, I have so much to offer and so much to give. And I am not afraid of honoring myself you know it's miraculous when you think about it you know because when i first started making money and it was you know my salary or my earnings were published all over the place i mean the first year i was like really did i make that much money oh my god um it, it was very difficult for me to figure out where my boundaries were because i'd grown up poor and didn't have anything so it's easy when you don't have anything and people ask you for money and they say, I need 500. You say, I don't have it because I'm just trying to get my rent paid. <laughs> it's harder when your multi-billion dollar salary is now in the paper and you get a lot of friends and cousins you didn't have before. So how do you set boundaries for yourself? I was having trouble setting boundaries myself for myself for even strangers, people would just show up at my door in Chicago and say, oh, bro, I left my husband, please help me. And I would, because she knows I have it. So don't try that now, though, okay? <laughs> don't try that now. I figured it out. So what I learned was is that, oh, the reason why people keep showing up is because my intention is to make them think that I'm such a nice person that you can ask me for anything, you can get me to do anything, I'm gonna say yes, I'm gonna say yes. So when Stevie called me this time, I thought I'd try out my first no on Stevie. Let's start big. He wanted me to donate some money to a charity and I didn't wanna to donate to the charity because I have my own charities and I care about a lot of people, but the, the, the problem is when you, you have money, everybody thinks you just want to give to everything. So every letter I ever get starts with, we know you love the children. <laughs> yes, I do love the children, but somebody else is going to have to help the children. So I said to Stevie, uh, I said to Stevie, no. And um, as a person who has that disease to please, I was waiting for him then to, to say, I will never speak to you again. I will never call you. I will never sing a song for you. And he didn't. He just said, okay. Okay? Okay, it's okay? He said, okay, check you later. And what I learned from that is, Many times you will have angst and worry about things and 
put yourself in a state, like someone said this morning because their phone went off, they were mortified over a phone, I said, really? Um, you will put yourself in a state when the other person really isn't even thinking about you. So learning that I could specifically determine for myself what the boundaries were for me, what I wanted to do, give my money, give my time, give of my service to who I wanted to give it to when I did, that I get to make that decision. And just because you get 100 requests a week doesn't mean you have to try to fulfill all of that. Just because you have all of these demands on your time and on you doesn't mean that you have to say yes. You get to decide because you're the master of your fate, the captain of your soul, as William Ernest Henley said in Invictus. And understanding that really changed the meaning of my life in that I was not no longer driven by what other people wanted me to do, but took charge of my own destiny, making choices based upon what do I feel is the next right move for me. My life is fueled by my being and the being fuels the doing. So I come from a centered place. I come from a focused place. I come from compassion. Um, it's, just, it's just my nature. I come from a willingness to understand and to be understood. Right. And I come from wanting to, to, to connect. I mean, the secret of that show for 25 years is that people could see themselves in me. All over the world, they could see themselves in me. And even as I became uh, more and more uh, financially successful, which was a big surprise to me. I was like, oh my God, this is so exciting. Um, you mean you got more than that 30,000? I got more than 30,000 by the time I was 30. So, <laughs> so my, so, but what, what I realized is through the whole process, because I'm grounded in my own self, that although I could have more shoes, my feet stayed on the ground, although I was wearing better shoes. These are kind of cute today, too. Uh, so I could keep my feet on the ground, even though I could get more shoes. And I could understand, I could understand that it really was because I was grounded. I've, I've done the, was doing and continue to this day to do the consciousness work. I work at staying awake. <laughs> I'm asking this graduating class, those of you here, I've asked all of my viewers in America and across the world to do this one thing. Keep a grateful journal. Every night, list five things that happened this day.